One of the things that we have to focus on here is this concept of compassion. What does that mean? We look and say, oh, this person, he's doing these terrible things to the victims. But when we see that the person is the perpetrator, we'll call him for a second, is also created in God Almighty's divine image. It means to say that at the moment of his destructive behavior, he has lost sight that, uh, that his victim is created in God Almighty's divine image, and he's lost sight that he's, he too is created in God Almighty's divine image. So what greater potential recipient of compassion is there than a person who has forgotten who he is and who everyone else is around him? He's, he doesn't have the possibility of a relationship, not only with his fellow human beings, but not even with himself. In fact, Rabbi Akiva says it's a great belovedness that God Almighty created man in his divine image. And it's an even greater Fiba, Fiba Yisira, that he made it known to men. And he made it known to man through uh, communicating with people like Adam and Noach and Shays and Noach and, Sh and uh, Shame and so forth. And then through Abraham and, and and Abraham, our father, and, and his offspring, Isaac, our father, Jacob, our father, and through the Jewish people to bring that message to the entire world. So if there's a person who is not aware of that, and you can see that from his behavior, that means that he is lacking the experience of this tremendous belovedness to God Almighty. So they, need person... to, yeah, so, so they need to be reminded, and this needs to be like a, a thing that all the people that are doing the rebuke um, take on this, this mission to remind everybody that they're created in the image of God. So they shouldn't be, they need to be connected. If a person is like naming themselves him, her, which is really a, you know, they're, they're sort of like focusing on the wrong thing. You are a human being created in the image of God. They're putting too much. Right. They're lost in the details. They're lost, lost in details. details. Like I'm tall, I'm short. Well, okay, but that's a, that's a a that's a tiny part of my reality, and not to minimize the significance of male or female in terms of um, putting a a um, uh, emphasis on certain attributes that I need to bring to expression in the world to fulfill my purpose in the world as a, as a male and corresponding aspects in a female, but at the same time, if I'm worried about that uh, that particular level of identification, then I've lost sight of the real identification of myself, which is one identification that applies to every single human being, that is that I'm created in God Almighty's divine image. And that is where we need to ground ourselves and ground other people. And when people, you see people responding with mocking comments, making fun of these people, um, or or attacking them with, with disparaging comments, the people, even though that what they're saying may seem to have uh, a, an appeal because it sounds like it appeals to our logic or appeals to our sense of, of frustration with what we're seeing, but those people are also off track because they're not seeing the divinity of that other human being. They're lost also in the details based on what the person's dressing or what they're saying or what they're, the crimes that they're perpetrating. And what, what we see from Avram Avinu is that he's pleading with God Almighty to save these people who are engaged in these type of activities. Not just these activities in order to have a certain experience for the moment, but it's really born of a religious rebellion against God Almighty, an attempt to throw off the knowledge of God Almighty in order to, and, and the, through these acts, it's, a, it's an act of defiance. So yet, Abraham, you know, Abraham our father is like out there doing battle with God Almighty to save these human beings. Why? Because he sees that they're created in God Almighty's divine image, and he sees that it's really God Almighty's intention that they should be able to return from the depths of this darkness to an open experience of their connection to God Almighty. So he wants God Almighty's vision to be fulfilled and, and is not willing to accept the a, a shorter, you know, a, 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 the time is up for them to be able to return to God Almighty. No, give them the chance to return.
So that's what he implanted in the Jewish people. He implanted in the Jewish people, and that's why the whole concept of Chinuch and that he's going to command his children after him is specifically in the context. Go look at the verses themselves. It's in the context of this exact incident. God Almighty said, I'm going to discuss it with Abraham Avinu because he's going to command his children after him. But this is a, a, an experience to have because he will transmit this attitude to his, his offspring. So that means you and I, and everyone who's watching this, has to feel a sense of responsibility that a person, just like Moses, our teacher, saw that a little sheep going off track had to be brought back lovingly. And you don't say, well, that little sheep um, has right now de minimis value to the general herd because it's not productive and it's only one of many. On the contrary, you know, it's not about the significance of this person in my logic. It's about the significance of this person in God Almighty's vision and like we see in this week's Torah portion, that we every person does count. So this little sheep counts because it exists. So this human being counts because he exists. And therefore, it's my responsibility to bring to him the awareness that he counts because I actually need him to know he counts in order for me to be part of the whole the hold for it to be complete and it needs to have him included. So I'm incomplete if he's off there um, confused with engaging in activities that are not leading to the wholeness of the human experience and the human enterprise unified together with one shoulder devoted to bringing the knowledge and the experience and, and the awareness of God Almighty to, to the entire world on a permanent basis. Right, right. And then similarly, if people just try to emphasize their, their color, it's like focusing on, on something totally external and not focusing on the, on the deepest aspect of a human being, that we're all created in the image of God. And that's what we should be focusing about. And I guess, I guess what we call the resistance movement, they could take a new angle of of it's more of a connection movement to to help people reconnect or to and maintain the connection with who they really are and themselves and their heart and each other the real resistance is to say that we refuse to accept the idea that even one single human being is not precious in god almighty's eyes exactly that we will publicize that we will refuse all the misinformation and all the disinformation that's been promulgated on us. And we deny it and we will bring to every single human being attention that he is important in God Almighty's eyes and also in my eyes. Now, so so the, we, the, the third one is, is Tiferes of, of uh, the beauty of relationships. And it's basically the key of not being um, um, it, it's the key of not being depressed. Like people, why did they? Why did they trying to find these uh, attachments, these secondary uh, ideas, which are not, which are really secondary to their true core and essence as human beings? Um, because maybe they're like depressed. So, so the third one was that that how do we stop things? Life being dry and cold. How do we stop our daily routine, our mitzvahs being a burdensome, burdensome habit? How do we how do we not feel like we're rushing through our schedule, um, not having pleasure in Torah study? Atmosphere. Everybody wants to live in a good atmosphere, and they go here and there, and they try to make a good atmosphere. Why do people like smoke? They 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 want to make an atmosphere, right? And and they want to have be able to influence others. So how do we influence others, connect to others? And it's all about that time when we spend ourselves praying. And praying is we speak to our creator. We speak what our situation. We 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 say what we did wrong. We say we what we want to connect, and we connect to ourselves. And when that that is the antidote to the oh, everything beautiful. So, so maybe the third Hayyam Yem is, is a real answer to the, to the sixth Hayyam Yem, the sixth Hayyam being, being how to rebuke, how to connect to others. So really, this is, this is how, do you, how do you connect to yourself? You got to pray. You got to pray to reconnect to yourself. And, and others not accepting your rebuke is just a mirror to tell you that you haven't done it right yet. 
I'm going to have to leave and you're welcome to stay on if you want to continue. But um, I just want to tie together one point that, that you said over there so beautifully and tie it together is that if I want the dryness, keeping life interesting and exciting, there's, there is the way to keep life interesting and exciting is to know what we were just talking about, that you're created in God Almighty's divine image and that you have this mission to let everyone else know because that's infinite. And it means that once we reach the 8 billion people, and they bring 80 billion people into the world, which we have the obligation to bring them all to this awareness. Then we're going to realize that the awareness that we had today of what that means to be created in God Almighty's image is infinitesimally small and uh, just the beginning of to understanding what it really means. So we'll be on a lifelong journey, an eternal journey of greater and greater appreciation of this. So life only becomes boring when we think we have to check the box and we have to do these things and we have to, you know, get the basis covered in order to somehow stay in good standing. But life is infinitely exciting when we know that we are part of the infinite. The infinite is creating us and he is bringing us the infinite out to reveal it in us. And we are in an infinite mission to bring that infiniteness to the awareness of an infinite people.